Hey there, John here with the second part of our look at the AI tweaker section. This part is going to focus solely on the DRAM timing control section. For more BIOS info, please check out my other videos. So let's go ahead and get to it. We were in the AI tweaker section. We finished up with precision boost overdrive in the last video. Now we're going to go to DRM, DRAM, or DRAM timing control. There is a whole bunch of entries here. And so we're going to go over all of them. Right at the top. DRAM CAS latency. CAS means column address strobe. It is the, the delay in clock cycles between the read command and the moment the data is available. When you are shopping for RAM, this is the first of the four numbers that are listed in the specs. It is interesting that as the generations of DDR have advanced, latency has increased. However, this has been offset by the higher and higher frequencies that memory can operate. To calculate the true latency, you would divide the CAS latency by the RAM clock speed and then multiply that result by 2000. This will give you a time in nanoseconds. All things being equal, for the best performance, the user would want to choose the memory with the lowest true latency. The website Gimmers Nexus did a great video uh, diving into memory timings. They're supposed to be doing uh, additional parts. Uh, that they said they're working on, but uh, at least the initial video was very helpful, and I'll link it in the description below. The next item on here is the TRCDRD. The RD at the end stands for read. The TRCD uh, is the second primary number listed in the RAM specs. This is the RAS to CAS delay, where RAS stands for row access strobe. How this was explained to me is to think about memory data being in a giant table. When instructions are sent to the memory to access a piece of data, the first thing is to find the appropriate row and then finding the appropriate column within that row. TRCD is the number of cycles we have to wait after a row has been selected to access one of its columns. Next one right below it see that the numbers are actually the same. It represents, it is also the second number in the primary timings. It's the same as the TRCDRD, except this is for writing data, hence the DWR at the end. The next one is the DRAM RAS number pre-time. This is the third primary timing number, also known as TRP. It represents the number of cycles required between issuing the pre-charge command and opening the next row. If the wrong row is currently open, it must be closed, and this is called pre-charging. Next up is the DRAM RAS number ACT time. This is the last primary timing number, also known as TRAS. It is the minimum number of clock cycles required between a row active command and issuing the pre-charge command. When taken together, all four of these numbers represent the clock cycles that are needed to access data for use by the CPU. By dialing in the appropriate timings into the BIOS, we can get the best performance from the memory, meaning cycles are not wasted as the memory is waiting longer than it needs to to perform its functions. What follows beyond this are the secondary and tertiary timings, which are only really useful for the most hardcore of overclockers. I have concluded just personally that utilizing XMP or DOCP, as it's referred to in this BIOS, is the most effective way to get excellent performance from the system's memory. But having said that, I was still curious what all these uh, entries represent, so let's keep going. Next up, TRC. That's the time between successive active commands to the same bank. TRC equals TRAS plus TRP. Next up is TRRDS. While I'm going to provide a brief definition to each of these items, I want to give credit where credit's due. I had an amazingly difficult time finding out what all of these terms meant. Um, ultimately, I was referred to a very helpful Reddit post in the subreddit R Overclocking that has a fantastic breakdown of these terms. And I'll also be providing a link to that uh, in the description below. Uh, the first one is RAS to RAS delay slash different bank. 
It represents the delay between two row activations across, two, across different bank groups. When a row is activated in one memory bank, the IMC, or the internal memory controller, must wait this many cycles before a row can be activated in another bank. Each DIM will have a number of ranks, typically single, dual, or quad, and each rank will have a number of banks, typically four or eight. Next up is the TRRDL. That's the RAS to RAS delay within the same bank. Then we have the TFAW, which is four activate window, the amount of time in which four row activations can occur within the same rank. We have TWTRS, that's the write to read delay in a different bank. That's the delay between a successful write command and the read command across different banks. Next up is TWTRL. That's the write to read delay within the same bank. And then you got the TWR. That's the write recovery time. That's the amount of time between a successful write command and the active bank being precharged. Next up we have TRC page. This is the page timeline. The number of activate commands that can be sent to a row within a certain period of time. Then we got the TRDRDSCL. That's RDRD represents read to read delay. This is for two rows in the same bank group. And then we got TWRWRSCL. This is the write to write delay for two rows in the same bank. And then you got TRFC which is the refresh cycle time. This is the amount of time when a section of memory is overwritten or refreshed before it can be read again. And then you got TRFC2. That's the refresh cycle time for double frequency mode. And then the next one is TRFC4, which would be the refresh cycle time for quad frequency mode. TCWL, that's the CAS write latency. That's the delay between when the IMC activates a column of memory and when a write command is executed. It's same as TCL, but for write instructions. We have the TRTP, that's the read to precharge delay. That's the delay between a read command and a row precharge in the same rank. Then we have the TRDWR, which is the read-write command spacing, the amount of turnaround clocks between a read command and a write command within the same rank. Then we have TWRRD, which is the same as above, except it's for the write command followed by the read command. I think you guys can see where this is going. A lot of writing and reading uh, timings and how long it takes. Next up is the TWRWRSC, which is similar to the TRDRDSC, except this is for the write to, to write delay for two rows in different banks. And then we have the TWRWRSC, that's the write to write delay for two rows in different ranks. And then we got the TWRWRDD, which is the write to write delay for two rows in different DIMMs. Then we got TRDRDSC, which is like the TRDRDSCL, except it's for rows in different bank groups. And then we got the TRDRDSD, which is the read to read delay for two rows in different ranks. And then we got the TRDRDDD, which is the read to read delay for two rows on different DIMMs. Next up is TCKE, which is the clock enable time. This is the minimum amount of time it takes for a CKE pulse to occur. 
Then we got PROCODT, which is the processor on die termination impedance. This is the amount of resistance that a memory signal has when it is sent to the CPU. Then we have the CMD2T, which is the command rate, the amount of clock cycles that commands must be sent to the DRAM to ensure that the command is executed. The IMC sends each command once under the 1T scenario. If you click 2T, the IMC sends each command twice in a row. Next up, we have the gear down mode, which overrides the above command rate and runs some of the timings off an internal one-half frequency clock. And then we got power down enable, which lowers the V dim, which is the voltage going to the uh, uh, RAM when the system is idle. It's designed to reduce power consumption. RTT NOM, that's the nominal on die termination impedance. Values are fractions of RZQ, which is a reference 240 ohm resistor. And then you get the same for the RTT WR, uh, resistance for signals sending write commands. We have the RTT PARC, which is the PARC on die termination impedance, resistance for signals sent to the memory when the resistance is set to low under the TCA key. TCKE above. So if this is set to low, then that comes into play. Next, MEM ADDR CMD setup. This is the address slash command setup time. The setup time for the address and command pins of the CPU with respect to the memory clock. And then you get MEM CS ODT setup which is the CS slash ODT setup time. This is the setup time for the CS and ODT pins of the CPU with respect to the memory clock. All right, well now we have uh, MCKE setup, which is the setup time for the CKE, CKE pins of the CPU with respect to a memory clock. Then we got MEM CAD bus clock drive strength, which is the clock drive strength impedance, the resistance of the memory clock pins on the CPU. And then here we got the memory CAD bus address command drive strength, which is the address slash command drive strength slash impedance. It's the resistance on the address RAS, CAS, WE, bank, and parity pins of the CPU. Right, next up we have the MEM CAD bus CS ODT DRV STREN, which is the chip select slash on die termination drive strength slash impedance. This is the resistance of the CS and ODT pins on the CPU. Next up is the MEM CAD bus CKE. DRV STREN, which is the CKE drive strength slash impedance. This is the resistance on the CKE pins on the CPU. And then the last item is the MEM overclock fail count. Uh, this appears to allow you to set the number of times that an OC setup will cycle in an attempt to determine stable subsettings before giving up and not booting. The number of options for memory timings is truly mind-numbing. When I think about how quickly DRAM needs to operate, you start to think about what an incredible feat of engineering everything related to a personal computer is. I continue to update my website with additional terms and definitions related to BIOS. Please consider liking and subscribing this video series if you're finding them useful, and I hope to see you in the next one.